When you were a child, you probably wanted to be a superhero. You read comics, you watched movies, and you saw how cool it looked, and you wanted some of that. Well, there was a man who did just that. He had a costume, he had an alter ego, he had a secret lair, and he roamed the streets at night fighting criminals, and he became a pillar of the community with quite the fan base. However, when he wasn't fighting crime, he was committing it. Because it turns out that today's mad lad was getting up to some certain things that you definitely would not call heroic. As it's been said before, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Phoenix Jones Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get into the video, we have a new sponsor. Fume. Fume is all about helping you break your bad habits in an innovative way. Breaking a bad habit doesn't have to be an uncomfortable or drastic change, so Fume is here to remove the bad from the habit. Fume is an award-nominated device that will help you do just that. Instead of using electronics, however, Fume is completely natural and instead of inhaling vapour, Fume instead uses flavoured air. Not only is the air flavoured, it is made using all natural, delicious flavours that contain no harmful chemicals. So Fume is all good with no bad sides. You can simply enjoy your habit guilt-free and replace your old bad habits easily. Your fume will come with an adjustable airflow dial that is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. After trying fume myself, I was honestly quite surprised. I didn't think it would be as flavourful as it is. It feels very fresh and the moving parts are great for helping fight stress. Stopping is something we all put off because, well, let's face it, it's pretty hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash dankula or scan the QR code on the screen and use code dankula to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfume.com and use code dankula to save an additional 10% off on your order today. I know that superheroes are kind of overdone these days and we do all wish that Marvel would just shut up and stop, but there have been a couple over the years that have stood out. Kick-Ass and Defender. Both of these movies had some similarities where the protagonist decided to become a superhero while being a completely ordinary and average person. They decided they wanted to fight crime in real life, just like in the comic books and movies. Both of these movies, however, are dark comedies, and they mostly end up with horrific injuries, because hey-ho, it's somewhat grounded in reality. But the person we're going to talk about today isn't from a movie or comic, at least not originally. While it may be funny to see someone dressed up in their super suit, the reality of it is a little bit darker. Not much is known about the earlier life of Phoenix Jones, other than him being born as Benjamin John Francis Fodor on the 25th of May 1988, somewhere in Texas, where he grew up in a bunch of different orphanages. Which is actually quite a common backstory for a lot of superheroes. But anyway, as an adult, he moved up to Seattle, Washington, where he first made a name for himself training to compete in semi-professional MMA. Benjamin would fight in the welterweight class under the names Flat Top and Vigilante. That last one might be a little bit of foreshadowing of where his mindset was at the time. His debut fight was on November the 2nd, 2013, for Cage Warrior Combat 9, where he beat his opponent, Zach Cohen, in three rounds, with the judges making a unanimous decision in his favour. 
A year later, on April the 6th, 2014, Ben entered the ring again for Combat Games MMA Super Brawl 1, this time beating Nick Cochran in two rounds with a technical knockout. Things were actually looking really good for Ben's MMA career. In fact, he won his next two fights, then had a draw, then had another win. He had absolutely no fear in the ring and would usually just start swinging straight into his opponent as soon as the bell went. Then, on April the 10th, 2015, Benjamin decided to use a new pseudonym in the ring. Phoenix Jones. However, he unfortunately lost the fight to Emmanuel Wallow, which seemed to give a huge knock to his confidence in future fights, since he was now no longer undefeated. From then on, Ben would intermittently win and lose fights. One of those losses was actually against his own older foster brother, Carlos Fodder, for World Series of Fighting 32. Overall, he won 7 fights out of 11 with 1 draw. So, still, not bad. Benjamin then started getting the urge to fight crime when his car was broken into. His son ended up falling on the broken glass from the smashed window and cut himself very badly. He had a deep cut going from his knee down to his shin that was bleeding very heavily, so he had to go to hospital fast. As a parent, I can understand something like that making you see red, but another thing that really pissed Benjamin off about this incident is that there were a bunch of witnesses to the break-in but not a single person stepped up to stop the criminals. Which, in the United States, is kind of understandable if you're not armed. The guy that had actually broken into Benjamin's car left his ski mask behind accidentally, which Ben later incorporated into his uniform. The second incident that made Benjamin want to become a vigilante was when his friend was almost beaten to death by some guys outside of a bar. Ben called 911 and wondered why none of the 70 people outside the bar would help his friend. So, until the police showed up, Benjamin made sure to keep the attackers busy by fighting them himself. After these two events, Benjamin decided enough was enough. If the police and bystanders weren't going to handle these criminals, then he would handle the criminals himself. So, he took on the superhero alter ego of Phoenix Jones, and I will refer to him by that name for the rest of the story. At first, he started by brooding on rooftops like Batman and other similar heroes do in the comics, but he soon learnt that that really isn't a realistic thing for him to do. While Batman can just glide straight down onto the street, in the real world, Phoenix Jones had to use the fire escape stairs, meaning he would be delayed when trying to reach the scene of a crime. The first crime that he tried to stop was a mugging, but by the time he had taken the flight of stairs down, the mugger was long gone. So the whole rooftop thing just wasn't feasible. He even bought a grappling hook, but he never actually used it since it just wasn't practical. Seriously, have you ever tried to actually use a grappling hook they're, they're awful, they, they just simply don't work. But one thing he did try and use, however, was a net launcher, which he got himself trapped in, <laughs> and he suffered the humiliation of a cop laughing at him and taking pictures, though the cop did eventually take pity on him and helped him get free. It took Phoenix Jones quite some time to understand that tactics in comic books just don't translate well to real life situations. One thing he could have though was a secret superhero hideout, but instead of a large cave under a mansion or some fortress of solitude, it was a small hidden room behind a bookcase in a comic book shop. So it wasn't really that secret since everyone in the shop could just see him go in. To realistically fight crime, Jones purchased a $10,000 dragon skin branded bulletproof vest with stab plating which included reinforced Kevlar. And he carried pepper spray rated at 2 million scovels, he carried handcuffs, a first aid kit, plus a stun baton. Police allowed him to do his thing since technically he wasn't breaking the law, but they also didn't support or encourage it stating that one day he would end up getting himself killed. 
The things that Jones actually did on the street to fight crime was stopping fights by making himself the target. He would intimidate drug dealers to scare them away and he would chase down thieves and carjackers with the goal of keeping them occupied and distracted until the police came. However, Jones was not the only person dressing up in a costume and using a pseudonym. But these other heroes were doing much simpler and safer things like feeding the homeless, helping old people across the street and driving drunk people home. All things that you can do without virtue signalling or dressing up in a ridiculous costume. But hey, if you are actually doing the world some good then I don't really care if you're prancing around in a leotard. Those kinds of superheroes didn't agree with what Jones was doing and they thought he was mentally ill. Which might be true since while fighting crime Jones had been shot at and stabbed. But despite all of that he still always returned to fight crime. During one incident Jones was going after a guy who had a 38 revolver and Jones had to take cover because the guy opened fire on him. Jones counted the shots and after the sixth shot he ran out to try and tackle the guy forgetting that 38s also come with eight chambers don't they? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a six shot, it wasn't a six shot, it was an eight shot. So Jones had to dive behind cover again. But after the next two shots, Jones tackled the criminal to the ground and held him there until the police arrived, where they arrested the guy and charged him with attempted murder. Jones was just very lucky he wasn't full of holes. Jones got very popular over time because, hey, he was a real life superhero. That makes amazing media fodder and people are clearly going to be interested in that and despite his popularity he still managed to retain his anonymity behind his mask even after appearing on Fox News and other TV shows since there was a big debate on the morality of what he was doing. Though side note seeing him on the news <laughs> does, does look a little bit cursed. He might have even had an action figure of his superhero persona made. A lot of the public passively supported what Jones was doing which ended up in him inspiring others to don their own superhero identity and go out fighting crime themselves which I'm sure resulted in many unfortunate cases of comic book LARPing fans getting the absolute shit kicked out of them by criminals. But just like in any other drawn out superhero series, all of these different heroes eventually decided to unite under one group of budget Avengers. The Rain City superhero movement which had Jones as their leader. Jones called it a crime prevention brigade to make it sound a little less homoerotic. Not just anyone could join however, each member needed to have a decent amount of experience in a martial art and a police or military background. Overall the group was formed of 10 members, Thorn, Buster Doe, Green Reaper, The Mantis, Prodigy, Gemini, No Name, Catastrophe, Penelope and Thunder 88. I wonder what his superpower was. But anyway, Jones eventually started dating one of the heroes called Purple Rain, who mostly worked in communications, like tracking crime reports and coordinating the members towards crime and medical incidents. Despite how they looked, the brigade were much more professional in how they worked, since they watched live police reports to step in before the police arrived. The idea was that they would show up and make themselves the target target so no one else would get hurt and they would keep doing that until the police arrived and arrested the suspects. Things went very well for Jones and the Rain City superhero movement for around three years. Jones was even seen as the head spokesperson for superheroes everywhere being invited onto the news and other TV shows, with one news report telling the story of Jones chasing away a car robber in front of the car owner. Dan was calling 911, but help flew in before he finished dialing. From the right, this guy comes dashing in, just wearing this skin tight, rubber, black and golden suit, and starts chasing him away. However, the criminals that they were stopping started to complain about the tactics that the superheroes were using, and the optics of certain events uh, did not look good. 
For example, some states in the United States still allow mutual combat so long as both sides agree and neither of the opponents damage property or harm other people. Which is based and should be the case everywhere, but I digress. In one incident, Jones lost his temper with a drunk after the drunk guy tried to bust open the window of a nearby car. Jones claimed the man was harassing him and called him the gamer word. So Jones challenged the man to a fight. The drunk man agreed and proceeded to get the absolute shit kicked out of him because even though Jones is a man dressed in a funny suit, he's still a trained MMA fighter. In another incident, Jones himself was arrested for assault while attending what he thought was a street fight between multiple people, except when he tried to break it up, they all ganged up on him. Now, why would they do that? Well, the police report said that the people were not fighting, they were all just dancing. And Jones ran into the fray and sprayed them all with high-grade pepper spray. Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, reason, the reason I'm finding that so funny is I'm just picturing everyone dancing and everyone's having a good time and then <laughs> this fucking guy turns up. In this fucking suit and just fucking bear maces everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I find that so funny. <coughs> let's, let's just let's just keep going. Uh, Jones, Jones had to. Uh, Jones had to spend the night in jail and paid $3,800 for bail. Uh, we did have some footage of the actual event, but for copyright reasons, we can't use it. You can, however, go find it yourself on YouTube. Uh, this is the problem with uh, footage in this video. There is tons of footage of all of these events and of all of the stuff that Phoenix Jones has done in the streets, but... It's all, like, copyright claimed and stuff like that. It's all very, very protected and everything. So, yeah, sorry, we wish we had more footage, but uh, the people that own the footage, yeah, they'll just claim the video. Another funny thing to point out is that when Jones was in court over the pepper spray incident, he wore his mask in the courtroom, which the judge very quickly told him to remove. After having his real face out there and having his actual real name read out in the court, all the journalists present now knew the secret identity of Phoenix Jones. But he did tell the journalists outside that despite all of that, he would still patrol the streets. Over time, some of the original heroes started to leave the Rain City superhero movement, either because they had an issue with Jones's leadership or just because real life got in the way. There were also issues with newer heroes making the rest of the heroes look bad by using illegal weapons on the street. So, Jones started an official registry of superheroes who all use legal means and protected themselves with bulletproof vests. Entry into the movement got even harder as well. Before, you could just use a superhero name, put on a dumb costume, and that was it, you were in. But now, new members had a bunch of requirements. Like, you had to wear a GoPro and live stream your patrol. You had to attend 15 patrols in total. You had to stop a violent crime. And you had to attend to a medical situation. Even with this in place, however, there were still people suiting up and committing grittier kinds of vigilantism. You know, a bit like the Punisher or Rorschach or Roscash or however the hell you pronounce that. Jones knew that these people would eventually make it impossible for him and his group to keep patrolling since, you know, bystanders and the public at large would just start to see these superheroes as thugs. But as the saying goes, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And in 2020, Phoenix Jones was arrested for trying to sell MDMA to an undercover police officer. And his girlfriend was also caught with four grams of cocaine. It turned out that everyone's favourite superhero was a drug dealer. Now, how the hell could that be? Phoenix Jones hated drug dealers, and he always chased them out of whatever territory he was patrolling. 
Well, it turns out there might have been a reason for that. Being a superhero isn't exactly very profitable. You know, you're not exactly on the city payroll and it's not like Jones had Bruce Wayne's billions to fall back on. So, obviously, he had to make money somewhere. So, there is a theory, bear in mind, just a theory, that by night, Phoenix Jones would chase all of the drug dealers out of his territory. Then, once the drug dealers were gone and there was a market of high demand but no supply, his true identity, Benjamin Fodor, would step in and sell people drugs. So, he was basically using the superhero persona to get rid of his competition. It's never been confirmed if that was actually true. But true or not, even with just the drug arrest, it looked very, very bad for Phoenix Jones, especially once the arrest hit the papers. And his image was completely destroyed, since while preaching justice and the letter of the law, it turned out he was just a massive hypocrite. But it wasn't just the drug arrest that made people lose faith in him. His fellow heroes also felt that Jones was starting to grow a really narcissistic personality, and he seemed to actually believe he was a genuine superhero. Like, not just a LARP and, you know, I'm doing this for a bit of fun and to do some good, haha, <laughs> nice hobby. No, he was starting to believe that he genuinely was a superhero, and people were starting to get a little bit worried that he might just be losing his mind a little bit. Over time, all of the other heroes got a little bit apathetic, since they didn't see any real change from what they were doing. That, coupled with the arrest of their leader kind of ruining all of their images, made a lot of the heroes hang up their capes and retire. The Rain City superhero movement has long since been disbanded. Superheroes obviously give out a very positive message. Protect the innocent, defend the weak, offer help to anyone that needs it, and look out for the safety of everyone around you. All very noble qualities that I'm very happy for children to aspire to. But when it turns out the guy who was supposed to represent all of that was just a massive hypocrite, it kind of destroys the message. Since his arrest, Phoenix Jones has hung up his cape and retired, and he now goes by his normal name of Benjamin. He has pretty much disappeared from the limelight. He hasn't returned to MMA, and there is pretty much nothing on him since the fallout of his arrest. He has pretty much vanished. But maybe one day he will return, during a time where we need him most. Like, when you're going to Colors Fest and your usual guy isn't answering his phone. Thank you on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!